first story. Neglectful parents did nothing about her golden daughter bullying. Now she broke my nose. I'm as sick of this SHT. For clarity, we're both minors. I'm 16, and my demonic sister is 15. She has never been right since we were little kids. Always violent. She bashed me in the head with a metal pipe when I was five because I wouldn't let her ride my bike. All of my life, I've been putting up with this SHT, and I have had enough. She hits me, breaks my things, literally stabbed me last year, stole the keys to my car, and banged it up twice this year. My parents won't do anything about it. She's already in alternative school for stalking another girl in her class. I really don't know what is wrong with her. She's not slow or anything like that. Before she got kicked out of regular school, she was in the gifted program. My parents think she's like this misunderstood genius or whatever. They refuse to involve cops because it's a family issue. Which brings us to today. My parents forced me to let her tag along with me and my friends because, honestly, she doesn't have any except for this delinquent at the alternative school she is supposedly dating. Whatever is not important. Anyway, I was hanging out with my friends today. And of course the demon was with us. We decided to go to the Dollar Tree to get some snacks. Demon didn't buy anything. As we left the store, I could hear something in her bag, like a rattling noise. I confronted her, and this little bee stole a bunch of cough pills. I don't know why. Don't they make meth out of those or something? So I told her I was going to call mom. I pulled out my phone right there, and she effing punched me in the face. I was really angry that she did that in front of my friends, and no way was I going to let her embarrass me. So we started fighting. I took her down and had her pinned to the ground. That's what you have to do. Pin her and let her tire herself because she will not stop otherwise. I had her arms pinned and she started flailing her legs and kicking me. She got me in the throat and I was letting her go. I was getting off of her when she kicked me right smack in the face with full effing force like she charged that effing kick up and broke my nose. Blood was gushing everywhere and she didn't even care. She just left. It took forever to stop the bleeding and my face is swollen and ugly. It hurts like a BTCH. My friend gave me a bunch of Tylenol, and it still hurts. I came home and told my parents immediately, and they asked me what I did to upset her. I was so angry that I told them I was calling the cops, and my dad told me I couldn't go to the cops without parental consent. Is that true? Something needs to be done about her, because she's getting a lot worse. My mom is eight months pregnant now, and I'm really scared for my little brother when he gets here. Please help me. Update. Well, SHT went down basically as I expected it would. My mom called me very upset that the police had come. What happened is that my dad answered the door, and he was really mad and probably drunk, honestly, and they told him they were there to check up on my sister. I asked if my friend's mom would really play up the fact she's crazy as F to get her baker arrested, because I was afraid they wouldn't arrest her, and she'd come after me. Well, my dad didn't want to let the cops in and basically told them to F off and they threatened to arrest him if he didn't, so he finally let them in. And I guess my sister must have heard all of this going down, so she barricaded herself in her room and wouldn't answer, so they broke down the door, and they found a bunch of empty pill bottles in her room. She was really disoriented, so they called an ambulance, and she got taken to the hospital. My mom said she went in after they left, and there were a bunch of empty bottles of cough medicine. She said my dad is super pissed, but she told me she's honestly relieved. Relevant comments. In response to advice about a 72-hour evaluation Baker Act, my dad would kill me if I did that. He's against psychiatry because our grandma was schizophrenic and bipolar. He thinks this mental hospital killed her. Yeah, it was our blood grandma on my dad's side. I think he thinks he's protecting her or something. She's going to kill someone one day. I swear to God she will. I've read some of the fanfiction she's written. She basically makes me read this crap like she's really proud of it. It's extremely graphic. Basically, it's just torture adultery. She writes this SHT about real people too. She got kicked out of normal school for being the girl she is, and was still obsessed with this effed up story about demons kidnapping, sang, and torturing her until the other girl basically got Stockholm Syndrome and fell in love with her. It legit made me feel sick, and in her sick mind, she thought the other girl would like it. I really think she's going to kill someone before she's 18, or maybe just commit self-harm. As much as she lashes out at me, she hurts herself too. She bangs her head against the wall, cuts herself, pulls out her hair, and stuff like that. I don't know. Grandma was crazy. She always thought people were coming into her house. She told me one time, I won't forget, that the Air Force was shooting lasers through her window and melting her ice. SHT like that. I've never heard the demon say anything like that. In response to the lack of action by OP's parents. It's true. 
They didn't even take me to get stitches when she stabbed me last year. She has pushed me off our trampoline several times. I have broken fingers from it. They healed kind of crooked. They don't even take my sister to the doctor. She was really sick, like pneumonia or something. I honestly thought she was going to die. She has some stomach problems, and they just give her peptabismal or Tums. Sometimes she throws up several times a day, and it's not an eating disorder. She complains all of the time about her stomach, and they won't do anything. In response to the removed comments, my mom basically does whatever my dad says, and now that she's pregnant, she doesn't want to deal with it. After the first time my sister took out my car and went to Alabama, she did call the cops. My name isn't on the title, and my dad refused to press charges when she showed up. Then my mom wanted to take her to see a psychiatrist after that, but my dad put his foot down on that. Oh, she does set stuff on fire. She set the woods behind our house on fire with one of our older neighbors. The fire department had to come out. Update 1. Dad 42M walked out. How can I 16F help my extremely pregnant mom 35F? The title pretty much says it all. It's a very long story, but basically, my sister 15F is mentally ill. I finally got sick of not just her abuse, but my parents doing nothing about it. The last straw was when she kicked me in the face. I thought my nose was broken, but it was just bruised. Anyway, I had the police call on her, and she was Baker acted. Since then, my parents have been fighting really bad. My dad is pissed at me first of all for getting her sent to the hospital and pissed at my mom because she doesn't want my sister to be around my baby brother, who will be here very soon in the next two weeks or so. A couple of days ago, he just stormed off. I don't know his whereabouts. I don't know what to do. Obviously, my mom can't work, and I just have this crappy part-time job at Subway. My mom is exhausted from my sister being in the hospital, my dad leaving, the pregnancy, everything. How can I help her? The pregnancy is already high risk, and my mom has gestational diabetes. She's so stressed out, and we don't even know what to do about my sister. I do all of the chores and errands so my mom can chill. Is there anything else I can do to help her? TLDR dad stormed out after a week straight of fighting with my mom about my mentally ill sister. Mom is very pregnant. I just want to help. Final update. Off rip. I want to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart for their kind and supportive words. It was overwhelming, and I cried because I thought you would tell me to grow up or something like that. My own family doesn't give a SHT about me, and I didn't think strangers would either. I wasn't able to reply to every DM and comment I got, but please know I read every single one. So much has happened since I posted here, like I could write a novel about it. So some things might not make too much sense or be out of order, because I don't want to trouble anyone by reading an enormous update. Some good has happened and some really bad. I'll start with the good. First of all, my dad left a few weeks before my brother was born. I haven't heard from him and haven't seen him. He and my mom got into a huge fight over my sister coming home, so he dipped. My mom had my brother, and he's perfectly healthy and happy. The pregnancy was high risk, so that is honestly a blessing. I love him to pieces already. He's my everything. There were a lot of issues with my sister. My mom didn't want her back at all, and mom thinks dad left so he could have her live with him. I don't know if that's the whole truth because, as far as I know, he never once tried to make that happen, and she had to be discharged back to us because, I guess, we don't have insurance anymore. Dad cancelled it or something, and the hospital wanted her out, and there was nowhere else for her to go. I don't really know the whole story because I didn't talk to her at all while she was in the hospital. Only my mom did, and when I tried to talk about her, she would get really mad and tell me she was stressed out enough, which I honestly understood, so she came back. I was really anxious about it but she seemed so much better. That's the thing. I had never seen her like she was. She actually apologized to me about everything and cried. I believed her. I didn't want to pry into everything, but she did tell me the angels told her to do a lot of the things she did. She was sounding like my grandma, who had schizophrenia. It freaked me out, but I accepted her apology and thought we could build an actual relationship. She was good with the baby too. She was his favorite person, just like with the cats. I guess they could see in her heart that she was a good person. Kids and animals have that sense, I think. This is really hard for me to type, so sorry for rambling on. But my sister is no longer with us. She passed the day before Halloween. She didn't come down for breakfast, and mom told me to get her. I never go into her room because she gets upset, so I knocked on the door. No answer. I went in, and there she was on the bed, shaking and shivering like she had DTs. She was dripping sweat and made no sense. I went to her and tried to feel her forehead, and she took a swing at me, but missed and fell to the ground. I panicked. 
I screamed at her to tell me what she took, as I assumed it was a drug thing, and I'll never forget. The last thing she said to me was that she screamed some absolute nonsense. I won't repeat it to anyone. I just like to remember that we made peace and were good. Anyway, I ran downstairs and told my mom, and she went to her. And by that point, she was seizing real bad and passing out. My mom called an ambulance, but she never came back. Mom searched her room and found a bunch of those effing cough pills. They were fresh too because mom threw out all of the other ones while my sister was in the hospital. So that's it. I gained a brother, but lost my sister right when things were starting to look up. And I effing hate myself for not being a better big sister and paying attention to what she was doing. But I really thought things were looking up. She was taking her medications. She was going to the clinic. F dude. The thing that bothers me the most is that I don't know if she did it on purpose. Did she end herself or was it an honest accident? Did she know you couldn't be doing all of that on her medications? I honestly don't know. She was so goddamn intelligent, she had to have known. Yet I can't accept she would do that when things were finally getting better. Maybe that's not right. I never truly knew her. Things were better for us. But who knows what she was going through in her own head. Thanks for reading. Relevant comments from Yui Fing Hate, my sister on related Arbist of Legal Advice post. Hi, OP here. I found this place after my last post got linked here. I really appreciate the kind words. I left some things out of my post out of respect for my sister, and I know a lot of people thought my dad was abusing her. She never told me as much, but something happened something a teenager should never have to go through. Remember how I said she was throwing up a lot in a comment on my last post? We found out why. Sorry, I'm being so vague, but I don't want to put all of her business out there. In response to the comment, guessing OP's sister was pregnant. I didn't want to say all of that. But yeah, this is true. We found out while she was in the hospital. I guess it's standard for pregnancy test girls. And yeah, so that happened. We have no clue who the dad was. I thought she had a little boyfriend from the alternative school. But I don't know. I know she liked girls for sure. I don't want to label her when she's not here to speak her own words. But I strongly suspected she was a lesbian. So I really don't know. She lost the baby. But right before it happened, she wasn't far along probably a month or so when we found out. She did claim the test was wrong. She said that up until she lost the baby, and she never named a dad. I honestly don't know if she wanted the baby or not. We didn't talk about it much. In response to the comment, telling OP, she did the right thing. Thank you. This is all so fresh, and with everything happening all at once, my mind is full of effery trying to process it all. I will be getting counseling though. Mom just got off the phone with the place, and I have an appointment for intake next week. In response to the comment, telling OP to remember the good of her deceased sister. I know I was really harsh on her in my OP, but it wasn't all bad. Like one time, this girl was singling me out for some reason to be BT Chai and threw a half full drink cup from her car at me while I was walking home before I got my car. I told my sister, and that little beezy got the hands and her tires slashed. She never said a word to me after that. She wouldn't even make eye contact with me. She told me half seriously that she was the only person who could F with me. It wasn't exactly difficult to redirect her, either. If she was getting into one of her moods, I'd tell her, let's go play Pokemon Go. I wasn't too big into it, but she loved that game. It made her so happy. Second story. OP cut ties with her delusional parents after they treated her husband as their son. My parents have two kids, me F26 and my brother Dan M34. Dan had a rough time growing up, and frankly, my parents failed him. As a teenager, he struggled with severe addiction and mental illness, and they did almost nothing to help him. By the time he was done with college, he had completely cut off my parents. To this day, Dan and my parents are still estranged. I, on the other hand, still speak to my brother regularly. My parents, especially my mom, take every chance they can get to mourn the loss of their son and act as though my brother wronged them by leaving. Dan has told me he wouldn't mind reconnecting with them, but only if they reach out and apologize first. I've encouraged my parents to do this, but they insist that he betrayed them. I got married early last year to my husband Jeff. We have a happy marriage, and he is adored by all my friends and family. But I feel like my parents have been crossing some boundaries. For example, whenever we've gone to visit them, they insist that he sleep in Dan's room, saying that their son my husband has come home and should sleep in his rightful bedroom. Before the pandemic, my dad would take Jeff out to sporting events and introduce him as his only son. Most of the pictures of my brother in my childhood home have been replaced by pictures of my parents with Jeff. The other day, my mom called to invite me and Jeff over for the holidays. I told her I wasn't comfortable traveling during a COVID spike. 
she was irritated, but dropped it. Then she called Jeff and begged him to visit without me because apparently, it's cruel for a mother to be without her child on Christmas. Jeff politely told her he wasn't going to visit without me. She's been emotionally blackmailing him ever since, sending him pictures of stockings with his, my mom's, and my dad's names on them and saying, but we already promised so and so that our son will be in town. This felt ridiculous and unsettling. So I called her up yesterday and explained to her that she's violating our boundaries. Jeff is not her replacement son. And no matter how much she pretends she doesn't have an actual son, she does. And it is her responsibility to make up for the damage she did to that relationship before it's too late. She started crying and called me cruel for mentioning Dan and said I have no idea what it's like to be a mother. And it's disgusting that I'm trying to deprive her of a son when she has already lost one by keeping Jeff away from her. My father agrees with my mother, and Jeff agrees with me, though he doesn't like to rock the boat and thinks I should apologize anyway. I thought I did the right thing, but now I'm really not sure if I went too far. Ada. Edit. Thank you all for the support and advice. I appreciate it so much. I haven't been able to sleep, so I've been reading every comment. I don't know if I have the emotional energy to post on Just Namil yet, but I'm reading a lot of what's posted there and already feel less alone. My tentative plan is to arrange for me and Jeff to get individual therapy and maybe couples therapy later on. We're going NC with my parents for a while. I'm also planning to invite Dan to stay with us over the holidays. I have a lot to make up for, and I want to spend as much time as I can with him and let him know he's loved. Edit 2. Also, in response to the people pointing out the gross incestuous implications behind this, with the way my parents talk about me and my husband, most people who didn't know me growing up assume that I'm their daughter-in-law and Jeff is their son until one of us corrects them. Update. Hi. I posted several weeks ago about a situation in which I felt that my parents were trying to replace my brother Dan with my husband Jeff. I want to first express my gratitude for everyone who commented and messaged me. I was raised in an unhealthy environment, and as such, I was very out of touch with what normal family dynamics and boundaries look like. The support, the resource recommendations, and the respectful criticisms have all been invaluable to me as I've begun to confront what I've avoided for a long time. People have messaged me, asking for an update. Well, I'm happy to share good news. My husband and I had no contact with my parents, as many of you suggested. We have also both started going to therapy. We have only had three sessions each, but I can definitely say it has been a total relief to process things that I have been bottling up my entire life. I already feel like I can understand myself, and the cluster F I grew up in significantly better. I'm kind of kicking myself for not trying it sooner. Jeff has felt the same way with his sessions, from what he's told me. Under professional advice, we are holding off on couples therapy until we do a few more individual sessions, but we hope to start in the near future. Now for the main good news. My brother Dan is spending the holidays with us. After taking health precautions, he drove up last week and is staying with us past New Year's. Having Dan around has been incredibly special for me and Jeff. Dan and I have been making up for so much lost time, and I've never seen him smile so much, and it warms my heart. I did tell him about the situation with our parents and Jeff before he came. It was hard to hear. But Dan has a really strong support system and seems to be processing it in a healthy way. He's coming up on seven years sober now. I was finally able to apologize to him for not stepping up as a better sister earlier in his life and enabling our parents' abuse. He said he doesn't blame me, but I still want to show him through my actions that I will always be there. My parents have been pretty much losing their SHT this entire time, especially when they found out Dan was with us. As a people pleaser, I'm proud of myself for being firm in maintaining my boundaries. Right now, my heart is filled with more love and joy than it has been in a long time. I know life won't always be like this, but my brother is safe, healthy and happy. He knows he is loved, and that is everything to me. I am sincerely appreciating what I have. Anyway, happy holidays everyone. Thank you again for your help. Much love to all of you three. Edit. Wow, all of your comments and messages have had me happy and crying all day. I did not expect such an outpouring of love and support. And it is making an already beautiful holiday season even better. The compassion you all have shown us means so much more to me than I can even say. And thank you for all of the awards. I have been showing Dan all of the comments congratulating him on his sobriety and he wants to say a heartfelt thank you. Emotions are running high in our house today. This Christmas Eve is one for the ages. Third story. OP revealed to his sister why his parents haven't come to see his newborn son. Chaos ensued. Me 26M and my boyfriend 26M had a baby less than a couple weeks ago. My boyfriend is trans-born female, 
then transitioned to male. But I knew him for years before he came out. And I was in love with him all those years he was too. That didn't change after he came out, but it was a lot to mentally process for me. We had a drunken one-night stand, and he found out he was pregnant. We're together as a couple raising our son. My family knows everything about this, but they are huge transphobes. Before we got together, they had lots of negative opinions when he started making changes. It bothered me so much. Then, when I told them we were having a baby, they lost their SHT. A few months ago, they seemed like they came around until they said, maybe, motherhood will change her mind. And yeah, I didn't want that SHT around us. We had a fight. I told them they weren't allowed around our baby until they accepted my boyfriend and kept their SHT to themselves. They haven't contacted me at all, even after my son was born, so that told me they don't want to come around. My sister doesn't know about our fight. She was really excited to become an aunt, so a few days ago she came to meet him. When we were talking she said, how come our parents haven't come? And I let her. They told her that I supposedly wasn't letting anyone meet the baby for a few months because my boyfriend said so, but I told her no. It pissed me off that they tried to put the blame on him, so I told her everything. And she was of course mad. She even called them outside to yell at them. The thing is, my sister is like their golden child. They care way more about her, and will do anything to be around her. Like when she moved to college a few hours away, they moved too. Everything is for her. So she was so mad she stopped talking to them. And now they're mad because my sister is pulling away from them for how they're being with us. The reason they think I'm ta, and why I'm wondering if I am is because it was a separate issue between me and them and didn't involve her at all. But now she's involved and she doesn't want anything to do with them. Which they're super devastated about. I don't know if I made the right move by telling her why. I'm very mad at them, so it comes off as petty telling her, knowing how she would react. Ada, update. I know it's been a while since posting this, but I wanted to leave a happy update. Well, bittersweet, but more sweet than bitter haha. Thank you for the support on my other post. It sucked at first, feeling like it was me that ruined the relationship my sister had with our parents. To ease some of the stuff I was feeling I talked. As much as my parents' transphobia pissed me off, I honestly didn't want her to feel like she had to pick sides. She didn't even let me finish talking about how, if she wanted to keep a relationship with them some point down the line, even if it didn't include me or my son, she'd be free to do that. All she had to say about that was, hell no. And that they're not true family if they can't get past their bullshit for my sake or their grandkids, and she was so disgusted with them. My sister was really cool for letting me know. This is all on them 100%. It helped to have that reassurance, so I'm glad we were able to talk it out. She had her own thing about feeling sad about the whole situation. So for a while she was coming over a lot to watch my son, while me and his dad had some alone time. She basically pushed us out of our own place because she wanted Aunt nephew bonding time. My parents are blocked everywhere. We haven't heard from them in over a month. She's done trying to reason with them, so neither of us have any communication. Of course, that brought the wrath of the rest of our family. But once they heard why, they backed off a bit too. Aside from that drama, we are happy. My son's got an aunt who loves him so much. Also, my boyfriend and I, or should I say, my husband got married last weekend. It was a small courthouse ceremony, but it was still just as exciting and wonderful. My sister was there for support. Then we celebrated at my husband's family's house with our son. There was a moment where my thoughts were on my parents but then I reminded myself that they're the ones actually missing out. My sister being there as my support and reminding me every time that this was all their own fault helps me not feel too sad about it. My family's what's important in the end. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.